round of applause to Mr. Ricardo. So this is really cool because I, I love that, um, sorry, I'm trying to find a spot where I'm not getting sunshine. There we go. Um, this is really neat because what a great diverse group of people. I mean, we've got people who do space travel, which I am so fascinated with. That <laughs> is so cool. Um, and um, salsa, <laughs> which is great because I love salsa and skis and just all kinds of cool stuff. So it's really neat. Um, I always love talking at at things like this because I'm a lot like you guys, um, I think, in that I started something based on a need that I had in my own life, something that I wanted for my own kids. And so um, I call my, my little talk here raising a business because Baby Einstein for me was a lot like raising my family. It was like raising my kids and it was raising my business. I figured it out as I went. Um, and I always try to, to remember that it wasn't just me that had really exceptional things happen in their lives based on something that they wanted. Um, there's this little girl I read about named Cassidy Goldstein. And Cassidy, Cassidy Goldstein was a 12-year-old little girl who um, found that she was always really irritated because her crayons were always broken. And one day she noticed that her mom had gotten flowers from her dad and they were in those flowers, the, in, the individual roses were in these little tubes. If you've ever gotten an individual flower, you'll see they're sort of in a little tube with water in it to keep the, thank you, to keep the, the flower itself um, from, from drying up. And she thought, oh, wouldn't that be neat? I could put my crayons into a little plastic case like, like that tube that's on my mom's flower. And so she tried it out, and she ultimately ended up patenting, patenting this, um, this product, which you put your crayons in, and it's like a crayon holder, and it's sold at Walmart. Now, I mean, this 12-year-old girl came up with this idea. So I think that's really cool. And there was this guy, Chester Greenfield. We've all used, well, many of us, at least I grew up in Michigan, so I grew up in the Midwest have used his product, which was earmuffs. He was 15 years old when he came up with the idea. He was out ice skating, and he was always freezing. His ears were always cold. His hat was coming off, and he came up with the idea for earmuffs, went home. His grandma sewed it together for him, and he ended up with a patent that was ultimately used by every soldier in World War I, um, so a pretty successful teenager. And then um, Louis Braille. 15 years old when he actually came up with something that he himself needed as a blind person who wanted to read, a system that is still used by millions of people around the world today. So my point is just really to let you know that there are lots of people out there, um, like you guys and like me, who are doing stuff that ultimately becomes incredibly successful. And if you can find your passion and find what you love and then um, have great success with it, that's just the coolest thing ever. Um, my ultimate goal when I first started Baby Einstein um, was that of any parent who raises their children, um, and I won't say it's exclusive to moms, but um, my situation was this. I really just wanted to pee alone. Um, this was the, the reason that I came up with the idea of Baby Einstein. Not really. I'm kind of a little being facetious there. But I did want to pee alone because when you're a mom and you're home with your kids all day and, and um, you know, you, you just want a few minutes of privacy and you think, what can my child do in the room um, while I'm going pee or taking a shower or whatever it is I need to do? What could I actually let my child do that might be stimulating for him or her and um, I thought, well, gosh, nobody's ever put classical music or something that was really appealing to me as a parent um, or, and made that sort of accessible to children so that if I do leave my child for a few minutes um, in their exercise or you know, a bouncy seat, what could they be doing that I know would continue to stimulate them in a way that doesn't make me feel guilty and doesn't annoy me, so it's not a purple dinosaur singing I love you, you love me, which is driving mommy crazy. It might be fun for the baby, but is making mommy insane. So what could I, what could I give my child that would be stimulating? And um, I actually, now if the video clip is working, we'll keep our fingers crossed here, um, I can actually pinpoint the time that I really came up with the idea for Baby Einstein. So I have a short little video clip. <laughs> So, 
you know, I, I try to remember that even today as I work with kids. I work at Children's Hospital. And when I work with little kids, I try to remember, like, get down to their level, right? And this is what we're doing a lot of times in our business. We're trying to get to the level of our customers. What are our customers seeing? What do they want? Um, so for me, in creating Baby Einstein, it was trying to see things through the eyes of a baby and try to simplify the world. So, for example, I would film um, something like stacking rings, like my hand just doing stacking rings, a real close-up shot, because to a baby, that's what's interesting in their world. So it was trying to see the world through a child's eyes. And I want to backtrack for just a second and say that I think that, you know, as I, as I talk today, one of the things that I'm trying to um, get through to you guys is just that anybody can do this. I mean, anybody can, and when I say that, I'm, I'm trying to say that I didn't come at Baby Einstein as somebody with this idea for a mega business that I was going to start. I wasn't the kid with the lemonade stand, you know, when I was four years old. I didn't deliver newspapers. I didn't start my own business when I was a little kid. I was like the kid in high school writing poetry at the back of the classroom. So um, I guess in saying that, I really want you all to know that it's just, again, sort of a, a reminder that you don't necessarily have to be this an, you know, enormous, fantastic person who studied business at the Harvard Business School to come up with an idea that's great and that can be really successful. So wake up your ideas, right? Whatever ideas you have, you want to wake up those ideas. You want something new. You want something unique. Um, oh, there we go. Unique. So that's what Baby Einstein was. And I, and I try to remind people as well that when you're starting an idea, you're starting a company, you're coming up with something, if it's new and fresh, that's the very best thing, right? I mean, nobody else has done it before. And I, and I think that that's probably the case of a lot of people in this room. You have an idea that you were, um, that you came to because you wanted it for yourself and nobody had done it before. And so um, you want to be the person that stands out in the crowd. Um, you want to be unique. You want to do your research. So. For me, with Baby Einstein, a lot of the research was focused on my own kids. Um, you know, and when you're a new parent, a lot of the research that you're doing comes very natural. So you're wondering things like, when will my baby smile for the first time? Um, and you, you read books and you start researching, you know, what's kind of typical of a child at this age? Um, what kind of toys will my child like to play with? These are just natural questions that you ask yourself as you're um, becoming a parent, and for me, then ultimately raising a business. What will my child want to eat? When will they start eating you know, solid foods? Um, these are the kinds of questions you might ask yourself as you're doing your research. So I would say whatever your idea is, do the research behind your idea. Um, you know, has anybody done this before? Um, what kind of needs are there in the marketplace? And you don't necessarily have to have a huge focus group of you know, hundreds of people. You don't necessarily have to hire some kind of a research firm to do your research for you. My focus group was um, in my living room. I mean, this was like a little play group I had with my children. So I might say to my, my friends who had babies, well, what do you think of this? What do you think of an idea um, that might involve classical music for your kids? Or, um, poetry, you know, by Shakespeare for a baby. And people were like, hmm, I don't know, I guess that sounds like a good idea. And not everybody was supportive of me in the beginning. So I think, too, what you want to do is try to find people who do support you. Find people in your life that can get behind you and believe in your idea. So the naysayers, like, you want to get rid of those people. Um, I say not so good. Um, you want to be optimistic. It's hard to see this. This little baby's onesie says, I'm smarter than the president, which we all may or may not agree with today, but, um, or maybe, you know, so the incumbent or the challenger, we may or may not think that we're smarter than him. I personally think I'm smarter than both. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but um, you want to be optimistic, right? You want, to, you want to believe in yourself and believe in your idea. Believe that you can make this happen for yourself. Um, I love this picture because for me, this picture has a lot to do with teamwork. 
And for me, I was a new mom. I was staying home with my daughter, um, and then eventually my, my next child. And um, I had a great partner. So my husband was my partner. And the thing that a partner can provide for you, if you get the right one, is they can do the stuff that you're not good at. So for me, I was good at coming up with the creative ideas. I was good at knowing what babies like to look at and what would make them laugh and um, what I wanted baby Einstein to be. But I didn't know how to, how to <coughs> write a PO. I didn't know how to um, balance the books. I didn't know how to talk to a lawyer about what I might um, need to do in terms of naming my company or getting a trademark. So I had an amazing person um, to do that stuff for me. So I would just say that, you know, in my case, I was really lucky because it was my husband, and um, he was, you know, moving out of a career into something else, and the opportunity to do something together worked out for us, and so it was perfect. But you want to make sure that you know your weaknesses, I guess is my point. So he sort of let me drive the business creatively, but he, and he was, he was happy to take the back seat but do a lot of the stuff that was critical. I could never have started Baby Einstein without a partner like my husband because he did that stuff that I didn't know how to do. So that was great. So I would always say you want your business to be backed or supported by somebody who gets it and who can do the stuff that you can't do yourself. Um, I'm having clicker issues. There we go. OK. Money, right? We all need money. So I know that. Um, for a lot of you, it may be a small amount that you're looking for to back your company. And for others, it may be a bigger deal. In my case, um, ultimately, to get the first video completely done, we shot it on borrowed video equipment in our basement. Um, we bought all of the toys ourselves. I drew the logo for Baby Einstein myself. Um, we did pretty much everything ourselves that we could do. And I would say, that's what you want to do, not only because it saves you money, but also because you become so tied into it. You really like it. You know, it's yours. And when you're behind every single step, it might drive people crazy, ultimately, when you end up getting people working for you. But it's so pure. It's so much yours. So as much as you can do yourself, do yourself or do with your partner, as I did, it will save you money. In the end, again, it cost me about $15,000 to put that first Baby Einstein video together. Most of the cost came from the stuff that my partner and I couldn't do, which was the music. Um, we didn't know how to do sound design, and we wanted it to be really good. So we hired somebody to do that for us, who happened to be a good friend. Um, and you know, you want to you wanna, like, tighten the purse strings as much as you can. And yet, at the same time, invest enough in it that it's going to be really good. So know your limits, right? I mean, this is what I can afford. For us, it was great because we didn't take any money from anybody else. And that's spectacular. You're not answering to anybody else. And that's great if you can do it that way. So I would highly recommend that. Worked well for us. Um, again, I drew, the, I drew the logo for Baby Einstein. I'm like still to this day so amazed and excited to tell you that you know this is still the logo that I drew at my kitchen table with my daughter's markers. That's still the logo that you will see now on Baby Einstein products all over the world. I mean, that's so cool to me. Um, and the name was so clever. And um, I would say that I think that naming your company, naming your brand, naming your business, Something that tells people exactly what it is is so critical, right? So whether it's like kick-ass salsa, you know, or baby Einstein, I mean, whatever it is, this said exactly what it is. It's, it's for babies, and clearly the name Einstein would imply it's about, you know, um, creativity, it's about stimulation, it's about being intelligent, it's about thinking outside the box, these are all things that we aspire to. We aspire our children to, to be as well. So the name said what it was. And the name, I have to tell you, is what sold this product out the chute. So that was really cool. Um, 
you need determination, right? So um, this squirrel lives in my, I, I hope not in my attic, but somewhere on my property. Um, and this squirrel can get into any bird feeder, no matter what it is. This happens to be a pretty easy one to get into, but I mean, I've got the ones with the cages, I've got everything, right? You want to be determined to, um, to make it work. And if it's your product, and you invested in it, not only money, but your heart and your time, you are determined, right? And you really, like, you really take that step. Once you start spending your own money, buying your own computer, if you need a computer to do it, or phone system, or whatever it is that you need, once you start making the investment, you will be more determined to make your product work, to earn your money back. Um, I love this. Mark Twain said, to succeed in life, you need two things, ignorance and confidence. <laughs> I think that's great. Um, I like to think of my own ignorance more as naivety, right? I was a little bit naive about what it would take to really make um, a business work. I wasn't exactly sure when I started Baby Einstein that this was going to be a big company. All I knew in the end was that once I started investing the money and I really got behind my idea and I really believed in it more, I wanted it to work. I was naive about how difficult it might be to get this particular product into the marketplace as a person who was working out of my basement in my home at the time in Atlanta, Georgia, and then ultimately here in Colorado. Um, but I was naive and I would say that that naivety and the confidence and the ignorance allowed me to succeed. And the reason that it allowed me to succeed is that it helped me to focus. So I focused my, my, my goal. My goal was to get this product, Baby Einstein, this first video that I had. At the time, there was just one video. Again, I shot it in my basement on borrowed video equipment. I put it in a package, and this was back in the days of VHS, I'm sad to say. Um, and I had it in a package, and I thought to myself, OK, where could I put this product that it would sell? And I thought, OK, well, I'm my own customer, right? I mean, I'm making this product for myself. I'm a mom. I've got little kids. Um, I'm college educated, where do I shop? And what kinds of things do I want for my, my child? And where are those things located? And for me, that answer was a store called The Right Start. And this store, this, I shot this picture in Cherry Creek. At the time that I started Baby Einstein, um, I lived in Atlanta, and The Right Start was predominantly only a catalog company. So you ordered baby products from them. And I love this company because, um, all of their stuff tended to fall in the realm of what I wanted for my own children. It tended to be products that were more stimulating, brightly colored, um, research-based. And so I knew I wanted my product to be at the right start. How do I get it there? They're based in California. They're mostly a catalog company. Um, I wasn't exactly sure. And so I talked to a couple of people that I knew who were in the business world. And they all said to me, um, you need to go to a trade show. Go to a trade show with your product, and then you can show people, like people at the right start, and there's sure to be buyers from the right start at a trade show that has to do with toys and what your product is all about, at Toy Fair. So Toy Fair is this huge, if you've never been to the Javits Center, um, I can tell you it's enormous. So this is kind of what it looks like. This is a shot down at Toy Fair from the balcony at Toy Fair and um, at the Javits Center in New York. And this is just a tiny little piece of what it looks like. So as, as you know, I'm sure many of you have been to trade shows before, but they're just booths and booths and booths of people like us um, showcasing their product. Well, I didn't have enough money to have one of those booths at Toy Fair. And I also was naive and a little bit ignorant about how you deal with trade shows. What I did is I went to the trade show with um, a VHS, with a copy of a VHS. Yes, did you have a question? I just wondered what it costs to be involved on that bigger scale. Well, it depends. So a, boot, a small booth, it all depends on your booth size, right? So a small booth may have cost, um, and you have to like look at all of your costs. You need to get a backdrop. You need to get the booth. You need to buy all that stuff at home. And then you need to get the space at the trade show. It could be anywhere, I would say, at a, at a show as huge as Toy Fair. A small booth might be $10,000. A 
up to, I mean, I can't even tell you what Fisher Price spends, right, for their kinds of things. But for people like us, I would say probably your minimum investment, and it may be different now because this was back in like 1996, um, $10,000 is my guess. Um, I couldn't afford it. And it was also too late. It was like January and Toy Fair was happening in February and I found out about it and thought about it and said, okay, I'm gonna go to New York City. I'm gonna fly there and walk around Toy Fair with my video and find a buyer from the right start and give them my video. That was how naive I was. Um, but I was determined, right? I still had that determination and confidence. So I did go to Toy Fair with my video and I freaked out when I saw this and I started walking around, 20,000 people, walking around that trade show. None of the right start buyers are in these booths because these booths are full of people like us with our products. The right start, they're buyers. They're just walking around looking at all of these things. So um, I'm walking around for two days with my VHS and all I'm doing is this, looking at everybody's name tag. <laughs> Everybody, I'm like looking for the right start. <laughs> looking for the right start. I like totally set my sights on that. So the second day, I see a group of women, like six women, with right start badges. And I like attacked them. I mean, I, I mean, it was like crazy. I'm like, oh my God, this video is so perfect for you. I mean, I was like attacking them. Um, I managed to get a copy of my video into the hands of one of the buyers. And who again, I think I just scared into taking it. And um, all I knew was that her name was Wendy. She didn't give me a card. I didn't know her last name. I was in such a state of enthusiastic excitement. All I knew was that I had my video in the hands of a Right Start buyer. And then I went home and went back to Atlanta. And I was so sure that like within two or three days, maybe two or three hours, because I was so confident, they were gonna call me and they were gonna like buy my video for all of their catalogs and it was gonna be huge. And so when my phone didn't ring for, you know, like that first day, first week, first several weeks, I was freaking out. I was so sad, I couldn't believe it. So I got on the phone one day and I tend to do things this way and I think that people um, who are entrepreneurial deep down, like we all are, are this way, I don't know, but this is certainly how I am. I sometimes get an idea and I just like, I don't even think about it, I just do it. I'm just like, I'm just gonna do it. So I call the right start and I go, I, I go, hi, um, you know, receptionist answers the phone, they're in California. Hi, this is Julie Clark, I'm the president of the Baby Einstein Company. Pfft, like I haven't even sold a single video yet. Um, and I was wondering if I could speak with Wendy and she says, um, oh, Wendy left the company. Oh, so here's when you become confident and you start to tell little white lies. So I said, oh, right. You know, I remember when I met with Wendy at Toy Fair, she told me she was leaving and she'd given me the card of the person who was replacing her, but I can't find it. Can you remind me who that was? Oh, she says, oh yeah, that was Kathy. That was Kathy Angel, which is such a great name, right? Seriously, her name was Kathy Angel and she ended up being my angel. So I got... Kathy's voicemail and I leave her this message and I say hi Kathy this is Julie Clark I'm the president of the baby Einstein company and I met with Wendy at Toy Fair and she absolutely loved my video she thought it was like the greatest thing and it was perfect for your store and she really believed that she was gonna pass it on to you and I wanted to make sure that you'd gotten a copy of it because she thought it was just great for the right start and so Kathy called me back and she goes, oh, I see your video here. Wendy did give me a whole bunch of stuff. It's on my desk. It's got a big pile of stuff on my desk. But I'm babysitting my nephew this weekend. Let me take it home.